Today on Nation, we're talking with the man, Mr. Mark Tanner, all about restoration, how to get into it, what to do, and hopefully you'll pick up a thing or two about it. Maybe it's something you want to do, maybe it's not, but just come hang out with us on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Nation and, of course, Window Cleaning Resource. Thanks for hanging out with me. If it is your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully it doesn't suck and you want to go back and watch some of the other episodes. This is episode 101, so there's over 100 episodes for you to listen to or watch. It's on YouTube and, of course, all of the SoundCloud, Google Play, iTunes, all those places that podcasts are available. So go listen, watch, whatever you want. But most importantly, if you uh, are interested in getting any type of supplies, please let me do that for you. Uh, I am a rep with Window Cleaning Resource. My number direct, 862-312-2026. Give me a call, shoot me a text, tell me everything's in your cart. I don't care, man. That's what I'm here for. I want to be your rep. So do that. It's like a virtual high five, and I will get to buy fancy, non-generic, um, actual name brand foods with it. That's like the going thing right now for some reason. But, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Uh, but go check us out. And at the end of this episode, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off of your entire order. If you order through me, just stick around, watch the episode. And if it bores you, just go to the fast forward thing, get that code, and then give me a call, shoot me a text, and we'll get it ordered either way. So today we are here with the man. What's up? What's up, Mr. Restoration? <laughs> hey, how you doing, Josh? Good to see you. Glad. Uh, appreciate you inviting me on. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. It's yeah. really funny that uh, we kind of uh, have, uh, you guys have had me on Outlaw now, and and we got a chance to kind of talk. And as we were talking about it, you're like a huge barbecue buff, which you've been yeah. helping me with. So that's, yeah, uh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. You know, we're going to start competing again this year. I made a promise to my wife when she bought me a competition grade smoker that we would compete. We did one, we did really well. And the other, I don't know, a couple of weeks back, she goes, we really need to compete again. Go pick one, one, you know, statewide competition. Let's do it. So yeah, I'm in, I'm psyched. It's fun. Well, if you need like a, um, you know, uh, an unbiased uh, answer on your barbecue, you could just ship it up to me. Um, absolutely. Just, uh, <laughs> absolutely. Well, anytime you need tips, you know where I am, man. I know. I know. I'm actually doing a, a brisket this weekend. Uh, I nice. had to get all the the stuff together, so it'll be exciting to see how that uh, how that happens. Yeah. So I'll keep. Yeah, it. the key. Remember, 185 degrees. Let it go to 190. That's that's when, that's when you got it right. Temperature exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Well, when you're not barbecuing, you are a uh, glad. Well, you're an owner first and foremost of a window cleaning company, of course. Yes. But tell us kind of a little bit about your company, your history. Just sure. Give us kind of a briefing. I'm a second gener generation window cleaner. Um, my father started out in the early 80s as a, um, a route storefront guy back in a city that was evolving. So his company grew relatively quick. I came out of school with a degree. I was an OMC certified boat mechanic. I got laid off from my job. My dad said, come, you know, work with me for a couple of days, get some money in your pocket and, you know, you'll find a job in your field. And I just loved it. You know, I loved the freedom of it. I loved the fact that I could make more money, you know, and, uh, and part of it was a challenge, you know, is I've always been one that, you know, younger days, especially would seek a challenge. So I was like, you know, this is pretty cool. I'm going to do it for a while. And that turned into a full-time job for three or four years. And, uh, that's how I got my roots in, it, you know? Nice. Yeah. And yeah. now you have, you're, you're the, the owner now you've kind of taken yes. the business yourself uh, yeah, you're, you're running. Uh, you said before you have two dedicated route guys, um, yep. and then you also have. Uh, you said two crews of two. Was it? No, two high rise guys that work together. Uh, we don't ever work single, so we have yeah. we have enough buildings to be. They're they're busy throughout the year. Most of our buildings are four times a year, so it's a it's a rotation that just yeah. starts over and over and over. That and <laughs> when we throw in some. Break. Yeah, that and when we throw in some restoration work. Um, we stay as busy as we want to be. So nice. yeah, it's, it's uh, um, I've had more guys at times and made less money and had less guys and made more money, you know, and I have always said, I don't want to be a circus. If I'm the ringleader of this circus, 
then it's just not for me. So we've yeah. been at altitude, cruising altitude for the last couple of years. And that's where I like to keep it. Nice. Yeah. That, I always say that to people too, especially guys that are kind of getting into the business. Everybody has a, a vision of where they want to be and there's no wrong way. If you're going to be an owner operator and you never have an employee work with you or, or under you or a helper or anything, awesome. Every dollar you make is yours. If you want to make an empire, like you yeah. said, be the, the ringleader, you can certainly do that too. There's no wrong way. It's just different ways to do it. Yeah, I think the big hurdle was um, delegating and letting customers into the hands of an employee that I've had for many years. You know, that was a very hard thing. And you got to take yourself out of the equation and just say, hey, you know, this guy's going to do the right thing and service the, the client properly. And we're going to get paid and move on. And yeah. and got to get out of that you know, that cage basically. So, mm -hmm. um, it's evolved, you know, um, I no longer, my company does building work and stuff. But I just don't have any more desire to climb over a wall. But again, that was a challenge at one day, you know, delusions of grandeur. I see these guys on 20 story buildings going, they got to be making a million dollars because that's what that should pay. And, and it doesn't, but again, it's, it's, it's a way to generate revenue, keep cash flow moving. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So now how did you get into um, glass restoration? Like did your, your dad probably didn't do that when it was just him. Uh, no. What got you into that? Well, my father had a company with five partners, um, which was a challenge to everybody agreeing to the same thing. I was the only employee for a while. Then we had a second and then it exploded and we all went, they went separate ways, which basically left me out of a job, you know? Mm. Um, so I worked for another company that taught me some high rise, taught me some pressure cleaning. And then my father got sick. I went back to work with him and eventually went on my own from that. So um, the restoration, you know, early on, I would remember seeing first floors of buildings and residential. I did a lot of residential to pay my rent. And I'd be like, there's got to be something that can be done about that. You know, and people live with the stain or, you know, and whatnot. And um, I, would like everyone else, tried every chemical under the sun. And, um, and you get various results. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you burn a window. Sometimes you do more damage than, you know, what, what it looked like before. Yeah. And, and um, as my company was evolving, I was doing a lot of pressure washing or adding that and had a trailer and a hot water machine and just found that my area became saturated with pressure washing and the prices just came down, 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 down because every handyman painter you know, was a pressure cleaner all of a sudden. Um, so, so people know you're in Florida, which is the yes. uh, headquarters of all pressure washers. I'm pretty sure that's oh, I think you guys have washers, more than the rest of the East coast. <laughs> pressure washers here are like, well, lawn services here is a huge industry. Used to be, you'd sit at a red light and see two lawn trailers. Now you see two lawn trailers and three pressure washing rigs. I'm talking hundred thousand dollar cab over trucks with more diamond plate than a fire engine. You know, wow. yeah. and they're washing sidewalks for seven cents a square foot. Um, it doesn't work out. It doesn't make sense to me, but that's what they're doing, you know, and we still do some pressure washing. I offer it to existing clients, but I don't go out and bid on only pressure cleaning. I try to tie it into a package deal with window cleaning, right. you know, so I, I was seeking another revenue source to replace my depleting pressure washing. Um, I bought pretty much every system out there, glass weld. Glass Renew, Scratch Hog, the SRP system, and started playing around with it, learning that you really shouldn't be using someone's window as a science experiment. <laughs> Do it at home, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I contacted a couple glass install companies that I knew from around and gave me some scrap glass, you know, wrong cut glass or a bad shower door. And I just beat it up in my shop and try to figure out how to make it right again. So um, then, like I said, I started investing in all these different systems. And I've always been like, as a kid, I never had a toy that worked very long because I took it apart to find out what made it work. <laughs> right, right. So as, as I reverse engineered everything that I was buying from, from you know, the um, internet, um, I was finding the flaws in every system. So trying to come up with something to go around, make each system work better was the first goal and i did that with a lot of the systems and uh, eventually just went over to my own thing i had some uh, i had a machinist make me up some some discs and whatnot that i had designed and 
it's been five years and, you know, this one didn't work. Let's try it this way to where I have pretty much something that will take a lot of the learning curve out of glass restoration and scratch and stain removal, you know, and they're yeah. two different markets, but they're very big nationally, you know, so, yeah. Yeah. you know, I was in window cleaning long enough that water fed pole was introduced without purification system. So we would tucker brush a three story job in the shade. So it would dry without so many spots. Yeah. And then when they started putting in the filtration systems that you could use them in a lot, you know, a lot of jobs and they come out great. Um, prices were still high because that job was priced as a ladder job. And yeah. now you do it in half the time with water fed. So my, my, what I'm saying is in glass restoration, it's in such its infancy that I can get those prices, you know, um, yeah. because there's very few people that I'm not saying they can't do it as good as me, but maybe not as efficient or, um, you know, get the same results because I've yeah. bid against other companies. And my first thing is pick out your worst window. I'm going to do a sample. I'll put my vinyl cling on it and see what he does. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we've got a local guy and he's good at what he does, but he bad mouthed me to one of the Citrix jobs that I did. It's a computer company. And, uh, black silver, black silver glass. I know for a fact, black glass is the hardest to restore. So he did a silver panel and I did a black one right underneath them. And they said, well, yours looks better. And his price is higher. And I go, well, you know, let him do a black one now. And he went in there and said, oh, that guy's a window cleaner. I'm a restoration specialist, you know, and I go, well, okay. You know, I'm not here to badmouth him if that's what you want to do. And I ended up getting the contract, which led to the second tower. And uh, I mean, I don't badmouth anybody. I would rather learn from him than say he's a bad guy. He doesn't even know me. You right. know? So it evolved from that into, you know, one job leads to another, to another, to another. And if you're going to get into glass restoration, I found that you need to make friends with the local installer. Okay. The local installer is going to scratch glass, install in it, or gets it in scratched. That's yeah. the guy you want to get in get some scrap glass and he'll give you referrals because it's cheaper for him to pay me than it is to replace the window that came in scratched. Right. Right. You know, um, and, and, and one of these guys actually taught me a lot about business. Um, he sent me on a, a Starfire. Starfire is like the most optically clear glass. You know, if you looked at Starfire, you ever look at the side of a piece of glass, it's green. Yeah. Starfire is blue. And if you put it next to Starfire and regular glass, the regular glass looks yellow. Starfire looks clear. They use it in high-end aquariums, high-end shower enclosures. You know, it's top, it's double the price. Yeah. It sends me on this job on a very expensive home to fix a scratch in a shower enclosure that looked right out a window. So when you looked at the shower enclosure, you're looking out the window, you're looking at this scratch. Yeah. And I, and I did it for him. I was, you know, in my infancy, but I was confident I could fix it. And long story short, which my stories do drag on, he says, <laughs> send him a bill for $350. And he calls me up. He says, you need to come in the office. I said, what's up? And I go, is it the $350? And he goes, yeah. I go, do you think it's too high? He says, no. He says, that shower door cost me $1,800. I would certainly have paid 1000 to fix it. And I go, well, I learned something doing your shower door. Your customer's happy. And honestly, it took me an hour. Yeah. That's good money. He goes, you got to stop thinking like a window cleaner. Think like <laughs> this guy's got to replace this. It's going to cost him $1,800. They certainly pay a thousand if you can do it right. You know, now that doesn't work on everything because they'll deal, they'll live with the scratch. They'll live with the stain. So you walk that line and become very efficient at what you do to make that kind of money per hour. You know, and not every job is a home run. Let's be real. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly it with, this, with glass. Other than the, the, the world of just leaving it, you either replace the entire thing or you get it fixed. Those are your only two options. There's, yes. you know, and, and being in a niche like this, a lot of guys seem to start doing it because they see just like you did. They see like there's this need of uh, hard water and everything. They want to do that faster, yeah. but they do malls and mall doors from people's rings. They're all scratched up. And then somebody asks about it or a homeowner does it. The worst yeah. time to start is if you're a window cleaner and you're the one that scratches the glass, all of a sudden yes. now you need to have the kind of insurance yeah. policy of being able to remove it. 
I've made a lot of friends with the local guys that we used to just turn our back as we saw each other because we competed in route jobs and he came in lower or I came in lower. And over time, over the last five years, many of these guys that would want to throw a rock at me have become my friend because they've gone out and acid burned a glass or scraped a window. And I go and I give them a professional courtesy. You know, I, I yeah. take care of them and say, hey, you know, if you see anything on your route, because you're not interested in learning this, but who better than a window cleaner to sell stain or scratch removal? Because yeah. we're looking at it all day long. You know, the average we're person the just to find it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that's led to a lot of work. So, um, you know, I have a lot of what used to be aggressive competitors. You know, they're my buddies now, you know, because yeah. I've seen them. You know, so, yeah. again, that's a marketing thing that, that's worked for me. Yeah. And now, it's, if somebody is kind of new to this, say they did see it or – uh, they heard of their competitor like you. Now, what what would you say? And mind anybody who's listening or watching, don't don't take this as like I'm going to do it right now because, like he said, this is a very expensive way to find out you're doing it wrong. Just so you know, yeah, you can make windows worse than they are by doing it incorrectly. So to start to learn past that, how does somebody get into this? How does somebody decide? Okay, well, I want to do it. What do I? What do I? What's the best thing to kind of get into it so they can start practicing and see what they do? Well, that, that's a hard, you know, the, the issue is you can't duplicate stains in a shop. You know, like I say, go to a glass guy and get a piece of scrap glass, even if you've got to pay him 20 bucks for it. Okay. You can't stain that window to duplicate what you're going to find. And there's a bigger market for stains nationally than scratches. People will live with a scratch unless someone drew their name on it, you know, a graffiti tag as they call it. Um, so, so at that point, you know, you got to make a decision. Am I going to go the chemical route? which can be dangerous, or am I going to go with a polishing route, which it's really hard to screw that up if you follow certain guidelines, okay? Meaning, don't go buy your materials at Home Depot because your buddy that polishes cars said, this is a great compound. Yeah. You know, none of that stuff transfers over. I did a lot of internet research. You know, I brainstormed with a guy in Australia who we eventually met, and he came here, and we did glass restoration in my shop, and we were just amazed at each other's work how we were across the globe and doing the same thing, yeah. you know? Um, um, so, you know, um, I, I would say this, you know, on stains and stuff, if, if it's so bad that the person is like, I'm ready to replace it, well, they have nothing to lose. So you need to remind them that anything I'm going to do, you know, I'm not responsible for the results, but I'll certainly do better. Um, right. I mix up my own polishes. There's a lot of cerium oxides out there that are great glass polishing compounds. You know, everybody goes online and the first thing that pops up is, is CR Lawrence, you know, because they're a huge, huge um, company that makes window frames and polishes and stuff. And, you know, then I researched that, you know, I could buy a bucket of their cerium for 50 bucks and it's, you know, 12 pounds. But the stuff I use, I buy by the ounce. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And because it's so much more pure, um, there's a lot less inner ingredients. So I compound a couple different um, additives that I have found help remove a stain, you know, and I, and I go with that. But, you know, I see people online saying, I think we should use cerium oxide. And that is the gateway. Start trying out different ceriums. You know, I've sent out, you know, people... I've gotten a bind and I'm like, you know, send me your address. I'll send you some polish. I'm not going to tell you what's in it, but you're welcome to use it and <laughs> yeah. give it a go. And if it works for you, then great, you know. Um, and because it would cost a tremendous amount of money to go to a lab and have it reverse engineered, you know. Oh, yeah. So, but, but I love to help people that get in a bind like that. So, you know, and again, if you go in the chemical route, um, I don't always agree with the chemical route. I did the chemical route. I've burned windows before. Um, you got to be very careful because remember, Josh, what you're charging to fix that window with a chemical, and if you damage it worse beyond repair or behind your ability to repair it, that's going to cost you a lot more than you were charging to try to take that stain out. Right, right. You know, you know so, so um, yeah, I mean, look, a lot of the chemicals will work on a mineral deposit such as calcium, that white stain, and it sometimes rainbows. It eats that stuff up. The issue that I have with it is, um, and I know this to be a fact, we did an 18-story building with Crystal Clear 550 that was built in 1986. So at the 20-year point, the windows were so bad 
you could hardly wash them. They were like sandpaper from the silicate stains. Oh. We said, we're going to try this product and see where it goes. And it cleared the windows to 80, 90%. They were happy. Within two years, the building was stained worse than before. Oh. So I started to realize that um, my theory is that you're leaving the glass in a very raw state. It's like a dry sponge, just waiting for anything to come along mm. and stick to it. But if you polish behind your chemical wash, now you've closed the pores of the glass, changed the surface tension, the water comes off it in a different way. Now you got something going. So three years later, we polished that entire 18 story building and it still looks good to this day, you know? Crazy. So yeah. So if, if somebody's kind of getting into it, they've decided that they want to go after stains, because like you said, it's more prevalent and people are happier paying for that. What yeah. are the things that they need? What's like, what can you do to really jack the situation up? Like you're talking about, you know, doing damage, making it worse than it was. Like what do people have to really kind of keep in mind as the dangers or the hazards are like how they can screw things up? Well, first thing you do is, is again, you got to get with your customer and say, hey, listen, I'm going to try this. And it's worked before in the past, but understand that, you know, it might get worse. It might not. And generally, you know, usually once you get proficient with a polisher, you know, and different abrasives, you can polish most anything out as long as it's on the surface of the glass and hasn't eroded into the glass, yeah. such as bad silicate stain or, you know, or, or actually if someone acid washes a window and then you go and then it becomes silicate stained again, that window is twice as hard to clear as anything else. Now yeah. I'll, I'll give you exact proof of that. We just finished a six story building, five of which is all glass and it's glass, stone, glass, stone. And the same guy that told me, he, you know, told this company he could pressure wash the stains off is the maintenance. You know, the, he has the contract for however many times a year. Yeah. So we set up a 24 foot swing stage and start polishing the glass. We start on six, we go to five. As soon as we hit four, it was like we weren't going anywhere. Nothing, it wasn't working. Huh. Okay. Three and two were fine. So literally three guys on a swing stage could do 24 foot of windows in one day on six, five, three, and two. The fourth floor took eight hours for three guys to get clear. Okay. And that's, I called the company that does the maintenance and said, look, you got to come clean with me. So I'm making your building easy to wash. I'm not going after the maintenance, but what happened on the fourth floor? They called me back after looking through his paperwork. He said, we did an acid wash only on the fourth floor because that's the corporate office that complained the most. Okay. That goes back into my theory of the, the chemicals will leave the glass in a raw state. It might be clean. Yeah. You know, I mean, and if you never see them again, well, you know, maybe you, you got away with something, but someone else is going to have to take it off. So, um, we ended up, you know, at 35 days on that job and it, and it was brutal, but you know, at the end it looked beautiful, Man, you know? Well, so I, I would suggest this, if you want to get into polishing and I know some guys use drill motors and different types of discs. I prefer something that's got a lot of power and it's heavy, but the Makita 9227C is a great polisher. It has the best automatic speed recovery of any polisher as it draws down and it's biting into the stain, the motor ramps back up to the RPM it was, which is consistent. If it's not yeah. consistent speed, you're not going to have consistent results. And I've bought them all DeWalt, Milwaukee, Bosch. And I always go back to that Makita, you know, yeah. I have about 10 of them and most of them are still in service, change the brushes out and power cords get torn out of them. But other than that, they're bulletproof, you know, um, that and a good flat back plate, and then depending on what you're going to take off is going to be the carrier or whether it's foam or felt or leather, you know, um, I use a foam, a dense foam and, you know, apply my mix right onto that directly, not onto the glass. And, it, you know, I mean, you'll know within five minutes if it's going to work on any particular stain. Yeah. Now what's like your average per window? Not that fourth floor, it's been acid wash, but like for time for people who don't even know if it's one and we'll say not severe damage with uh, some staining, but general 
ballpark, what are you thinking on a window? What does it take you to do a standard? You know, it goes to your ability because as you become more proficient with it, then your hourly rate comes up. But the average window for a stain removal is anywhere from 75 to 100 bucks, you know, yeah. or up. Depending, you know, if it's on a swing stage and you're going to be 50 feet in the air, that's a whole nother animal but like the citric stuff I, days worth. <laughs> yeah 35 days um just burning yourself out in the sun um you know the best jobs are you know it's like the high-rise guys most of them will tell you the same thing that i say which is do you want that building that takes 15 days for four guys or do you want the one that's just out of the reach of the average guy that could put two on it and be gone in two days that's yeah. the ones i want you know because yeah. There's too many variables with wind and weather and rain and people not showing up and equipment failure. So yeah, um, I usually do land one or two big ones a year, like the Citrix job, but I'm happy doing 10 windows on the first floor of a building. And, and, and it's a selling point because what you do is when you sell the stain removal, you go to the property manager and you say, hey, who better than to maintain this than the guy that knows how to fix it? And then you end up with the whole building. Yeah. Well, that's the key. Yeah. 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 So we're playing around right now with glass sealants. Um, we're, we're partnered with Nanovations and I highly recommend there's nothing in it for me. I get a little bit better price Josh than you would maybe WCR. I'd love to see you guys sell their product. Um, because it's, it's the only product that will give you a five year warranty on, on restored glass and a 10 year warranty on brand new glass that it sheds the water and stains don't, come back wow yeah it's great yeah it's a great product and it's so, the only one i've tried them all so when you're done cleaning the window removing the stain you will always seal it or you're just getting into that no, that's an upsell you know i mean like the citrix job just the sealant was another ten thousand dollars in material to me you yeah, know and if you double that it's another 20 grand on the job so um we're doing some penthouse windows on the 23rd floor right now on that same building that we polished the entire job. 